Yo, hello, hello, welcome to the elephant in the room. My name is Aaron and in today's video I will continue with the chapter Systems to Organize Societies from the book The Money Game and Beyond. Alright, so I want to start with something interesting that I experienced today. You know, I'm doing this apprenticeship at SAP, which is a huge IT company, making billions of dollars of revenue every year. And uh, I was listening to an interview basically from the CEO. He was answering some questions from students. And um, yeah, basically it was about the motto from SAP is to help the world run better and improve people's lives. But of course, it's a huge company that is, their goal is basically to make more profit like every other company. Um, he was also bragging about how he's meeting other CEOs from Microsoft, from um, Adidas, from Exxon Mobil. And um, yeah, he was just saying BMW wants to sell more cars, but they don't have enough semiconductors right now. Um, Adidas wants to um, sell more clothes, basically, but they don't have enough workers right now because of COVID. And it was just interesting to see um, how, yeah, like a business talk, like a business meeting is is going on everybody seems to be so cool because they can talk about billions of dollars of, of money and yeah isn't it interesting that these values from some people are so distorted they don't care about the environment they don't care about other people all they care is about profit and and making more money and yeah this is because of the environment this is because of our trade-based society which incentivizes these behaviors so yeah this is something that um, some people analyzed um, already 200 years ago and we are going to meet them and discuss what they proposed in order to um, organize society in another way so let me share the screen um, yeah just as a small note um, I mean the last video was pretty long um, I mean ideas like feudalism totalitarianism imperialism are of course completely obsolete and unacceptable um, this is not going to make progress for society so yeah we but it's important to know what these ideas are, are about so um, let's start with the guy his name is Robert Owen and um, 200 years ago he said something like hold on we can do better than this we need to respect the workers at all costs because he analyzed that this profit driven capitalism um, is pretty damaging for the people many people are suffering um, because of this system so this Robert Owen um, he owned basically some factory mills um, that about 2000 people were associated with um, and most of these workers or many of them lived in very poor conditions theft and drunkenness were pretty common um, education and sanitation were neglected and most families lived in one room so he tried now to improve their situation by opening quality stores for the workers improving their working conditions he was also actually one of the first guys who proposed today's common eight hour workday. So back then um, it was usual for people to work 12 hours a day and he was like, okay, let's shorten the workday for these people so they have more time to relax and um, yeah, just for their general health. He even tried to shape their behaviors by banning alcohol use in public because he saw, yeah, Drinking a lot of alcohol is, is also not so good for your health mentally and physically so he tried to ban that and he was also one of the first to bring the concept of childcare in, into the world. Um, he considered that by treating people well and creating a healthier environment for them we can allow people to flourish and in turn create a better society. So. 
here comes in the thinking of okay human beings are a product of their environment so if you create a, si a saner environment for people the behaviors will, will be saner as well it's similar it's it's not rocket it's no rocket science at all i mean just think about a dog so many people in today's society have a dog and they care about the dog they treat the dog so well they give it food they go out with the dog and then the dog will be happy of course the dog will have a great life and actually which is quite ridiculous that many dogs have a better life than people um, in today's world think about that um, and of course if you don't take care of the dog if you beat it if you won't give it food then it will die of course so it's no rocket science behind that so um, he had this thinking of okay human beings are a product of their environment but he also held some odd notions about human nature and the influence of God on behavior that were anything but scientific so he also had some strange ideas and of course like he was not the first guy to realize or understand that human beings are products of their environment but he was one of the first if not the first to put them into significant testing so now the kid is like okay how did he test them i'm so curious so what happened was basically that um, his new care programs um, that he developed eventually cost way too much so it was too expensive um, for him to sustain and he was forced to sell his part of the business then um, he had a new idea because with that money he was creating some communities with around 1200 people um, and they should live on a land between four to six square kilometers all living in one large square building with a public kitchen and mess halls each family should have their own private apartment along with handling the entire care of their children until they reach age three after which they should be brought up by the community so that's also an interesting idea their parents would have access to them at meals however and at all other proper times and the idea was basically to organize everything communally so um, for example raising children but then also work and the enjoyment of its results should be experienced communally he thought of these communities based on his experience with the mills and the workers so the kid is now um, so he wanted for children to not grow alongside their parents i don't think like that i love my parents but um, the old martian guy continues well that's something others felt as well and it's a good point as you will see later on we will see or recognize this approach in another example later so basically these projects that robert owen had they failed eventually because of um, in the words of his son it was because of the choice of occupants i had a generous collection of radicals enthusiastic devotees to principle honest latitudinarians and lazy theorists with a sprinkling of unprincipled sharpers thrown in <laughs> so basically i guess many different people uh, with different values and it just didn't work out <laughs> i think yeah that can happen um, anytime that if you put a bunch of people together there might be conflict some might not uh, get so well along with others and that's what happened there it's interesting however that the people didn't have any control no one owned anything many indeed took a scientific endeavor of studying nature and released some science-based books some focused on educating children and so on but it did not work because there was no science in his approach just mainly his personal views as to how to organize such a community and one of the participants also said that they had many people with different ideas within a miniature world that same guy later invented anarchism well at least he promoted and enforced the notion as the concept of anarchy is yet another old notion one that basically opposes a state-managed society meaning tribes with leaders anarchy wants all tribe people to be free and not coerced or controlled in any way so they reject a state-managed society 
And um, yeah, what does that mean? Is the kid asking and the old dude says, well, no one knows really. Like if you say, okay, we don't want to have leaders, uh, no states. Okay, so how are we going to organize things? And then, yeah, it's like, it's, it's tricky, right? If, if everybody does whatever they want, yeah, but you need a plan. And this is also something that we are going to learn um, throughout this book what this plan, how this plan could look like. All right, so um, these ideas of Robert Owen were coined as socialism, a system of no ownership and one of care for our fellow man. But again, they weren't really new ideas as many religions and ancient tribes had similar ideas of making an equal society for all humans, but he was the one to test them though mostly as a personal and non-scientific test on a small scale and for a brief period of time. But his work significantly inspired others in one way or another. And now the kid is like, yeah, of course, I want to hear about other people with other ideas. So what has been going on on planet Earth in 1848? <laughs> uh, <laughs> there was a guy called Friedrich Engels and then another one whose name is Karl Marx. And these two analyze pretty well our current system, the flaws of this system, and um, proposed also how to overcome this system. So let's tune in. So what is very important about these two guys is they were very good at pointing out in detail the innate failures of capitalism, the flaws of capitalism, of this system. And they became known worldwide for their critique. So what is also important is that they were thinking about a different kind of society, completely different from capitalism, realizing that you can only create a stable society through abundance. Scarcity must be eliminated, otherwise such a society will not work and that machinery should replace man's labor so that humans can spend their time doing what they love doing. And then Marx thought that it was naive of Owen to try to build a society based on no ownership, no leader and so on, because in his view such a society can only be arrived at, not intentionally forced. So he was thinking it could begin with capitalism, which he saw as very productive but extremely unfair. And of course, this is absolutely true, where rich CEOs like, like my boss, basically, from SAP, has so much money. Or take, yeah, Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates or any other CEO, which earns billions or millions per week or month or whatever. Um, and then I was in Nepal and I saw children like starving on the street or having to work, having to scavenge through the rubbish because otherwise they could not yeah, sustain themselves or they have a very poor life. So of course, it's, this world is very, very unfair. And his thinking now of uh, Karl Marx was now um, that the workers must overtake the factories basically. Um, he was thinking once humans achieve a high level of production through this exploitation of people and the environment, the workers must revolt for their rights, as such a revolution would be the only thing that could bring about such a society. So it must come from the general public and I think this is a very good idea because you cannot force something onto people which is something that we are also going to discuss later in the book um, it needs to be yeah it, it, it needs everybody more or less or like <laughs> that's the tricky thing in, in today's world right um, <laughs> Marx was thinking that after the revolution people will self-organize where all of the means of production, distribution and whatever else people want will be a result of how they organize and vice versa. Marx and Engels called this revolution from capitalism through socialism communism. Basically a more radical idea of socialism based upon the need for a revolution. 
The main idea behind communism was this revolution. The fact that the workers will eventually revolt against the ones in power, stating that this will come about as a natural part of history and that it will definitely happen because capitalism is not a sustainable system. But look around the world, we still live uh, in a trade-based society, right? We still have basically the mechanisms of capitalism at work. And why is that? Because people are not educated, you might say. And yes, that's true. So the kid is asking, very interesting indeed and looks quite fair, but after the revolt, what would they create? I still cannot understand how they would self-organize. Am I missing something? And then the old Martian guy says, well, they didn't really say much at all about that part. And maybe this is also a very important point because you know you grow up in this world and you see everybody is just working and yeah making a business and having a career so of course you think about okay these people seem to be successful that's what is incentivized by our system if you are an asshole basically if you only care about profit then you are rewarded by this system and this is very very dangerous so of course if nobody knows what to do how to organize a society then we are going to end up in chaos and that's what i see for the future unfortunately unless people get educated and this is why i feel like the trump project is so important because it explains in detail these ideas and brings it down to like okay what's behind the idea why did it work why did it not work we will discuss that um, in this book so this is very important um, the old martian guy says that karl marx and um, friedrich engels they just said that people can self-organize somehow that machines will do most of the work while people will have their leisure to spend their time as they wish to quote them, in, com in a communist society where nobody has one exclusive sphere of activity but each can become accomplished in any branch he wishes, society regulates the general production and thus makes it possible for me to do one thing today and another tomorrow. To hunt in the morning, fish in the afternoon, rear cattle in the evening, criticize after dinner, just as I have a mind without ever becoming hunter, a fisherman, a herdsman or a critique. So this is pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> like, I mean, if you are free to do whatever you like to do, then I think this is probably the, the best life you can live, right? Where you're not forced to do something, where you're not enslaved by something or someone and um, yeah have the freedom to to do whatever you like and the kid lost the quote of course because that feels like okay people are free to do whatever they want to do they can fulfill themselves they can realize their full potential and isn't this what we should do on this planet right so the old martian guy continues they envision a world of abundance of no nations no leaders no religions they thought that children must be well educated and the needs of all people met before communism will be in place something like workers revolt they get in power and they care for their fellow workers they organize somehow to provide the basic needs for all citizens through taxation, elimination of private property, offering employment, etc. And they will provide free education for all children. They projected that all of that will abolish competition and lay out a path towards a true communist society. They plan to concentrate the power to the state as a first transition, to even demolish all jewelry buildings and create the means for people to work abolish all banks and let the tribe control the money plus let the tribe control the main utilities such as transportation means of production etc they also thought that for such a society to emerge the revolution must happen in many tribes at once not just one of them because tribes are dependent on each other in terms of trade they even called it scientific socialism 
as they said, you need to apply the scientific method in order to organize any society. You have to look back at and learn from history and then try and test your ideas. So I mean what these guys had in mind already 200 years ago was quite progressive and very interesting. Because isn't this kind of the world that we all would like to live in, right? Where everybody can fulfill their or realize their full potential, where um, people are free to do whatever they want to do. Um, and there is no dictatorship, no one person in power who controls everything. Um, so yeah, they had some great ideas. So also the kid is saying, all sounds great to me. I wonder even more if they succeeded. And now the old dude says, let me stress this though. They concluded that such a society could not be planned into existence, but would instead emerge out of economic evolution. An example of this was the advent of agriculture, which enabled human communities to produce a surplus of food. This exchange in material and economic development led to many changes in social relations and rendered the traditional form of social organization obsolete as it was based on subsistence living and had become a severe hindrance to further material progress. So it's just to understand the thinking behind this um, idea because they were saying okay we cannot like put communism into practice we cannot force it onto people it must emerge it must emerge from the general public right and the same happened in in the advent of agriculture where um, yeah people started to farm instead of hunt and um, yeah hunt for food or gather food so and that also was such a change in the social relations that people had together um, because of course we, we, you lived in a small tribe you were moving constantly around you were hunting for food um, hunting animals you were gathering um, berries and fruits and whatever and now that you grow food on in one place basically you have a farm then of course you you're settled in one place and this is a huge change in social relations. So in other words, changes in economic conditions necessitated a change in social organization. Hard to get? And the kid is now like, you mean they said that new technologies change how society is structured? That's the basic idea here. And the old dude is exactly, that's the point. The idea was promoted by others at that time, influenced by Darwin's evolution of species theory, as they realized that such changes in technology will consequently change how a society gets to be organized, much the same way that changes in environmental forces encourage species to transmute and evolve. Aha, gotcha, says the kid. But then the old dude says, well, a different interpretation of socialism from Richard Owen took place in the US tribe, where they were, instead of um, overthrow the current system, they were altering it. So, for example, um, workers were gathering together and they were going on strikes in order to force um, some uh, change in laws on behalf of the workers like better working conditions, better salaries. Um, so yeah, these are methods of, okay, let's not overthrow this system, but alter it in time. This worked to a certain degree and it was less violent and less radical. And we are still seeing this approach on earth today when tribes adopt a healthcare system or other social services to take care of their tribe members alongside the profit-driven capitalism. But is it really working? And that's my question and I would say no. Because we live in a time in 20, almost 2022 and we still have so many problems We like this environment pollution. I, I'm reading every day, I'm reading articles about problems, you know. Um, there is, for example, tromnews.com and also translated this into German and there are Trom Nachrichten 
and he, uh, on this website I, I um, accumulate different sources from different scientific and news um, websites and I can read about problems, about climate change, about coronavirus, about um, environmental pollution. I've read recently that they already found plastic, like tiny plastic particles in, in people's brains. And imagine that if something can cross the brain, how is it called, the blood-brain um, border, then I mean your, your brain is so important and if any kind of external uh, stuff gets inside your brain your it, it can be very bad for you so and if there's already plastic in there like tiny plastic particles then it's completely fucked up <laughs> and this is what what's happening yeah women and girls are at high risk of being pushed into modern slavery these kind of articles, yeah, you can read them every day. Battle to end HIV, COVID demands greater international solidarity, but do we see international solidarity? Of course not in a trade-based society where everybody is just caring about themselves. Um, all right, so let's get back. So we really need to, and that's, that's the thing. We, we cannot just patch the system, we need to overcome this system. So let's understand better how people tried to overcome this system. And there was one guy and his name was Lenin. He thought that Marx was right and that his radical approach was the solution rather than trying to merge some of Marx's ideas with a capitalist approach. But he disagreed with communism that the workers would revolt, as Marx and Engels said. So he and a few others decided that they must revolt and bring about the change. He managed to get elected as the leader of the Russian tribe, the USSR, as it was called back then. But he also brought his own collection of values with him and killed many millions of people who opposed the kind of system he was trying to establish. The working conditions for most people were awful with very little food and the overall result was a dictatorship. So what this guy was doing, he, he was just saying, okay, we need communism and he managed to get elected and then he was saying that everyone who opposes uh, him, the, uh, they should get killed. <laughs> like There's this uh, saying here, you must make example of these people um, hang, I mean hang publicly so that people see it at least 100 kulaks, rich bastards. So kulaks are uh, rich people and um, yeah, publish their names, seize all their grain, etc, etc. And is this a uh, way of how to change things if you hang people? <laughs> of course not. And of course then you should not confuse um, the U. USSR uh, in Russia um, with communism. If you think about communism, the idea and then how it was being um, put into practice in Russia, then these are two completely different things. And many people confuse that. They say, oh, you're a communist. And then they think about what the Lenin did back in the days. <laughs> That's just, um, yeah, ridiculous. Same happened in China. <laughs> there was, um, yeah, the same model arose in China where the tribe controlled the means of production and distributed for the betterment of people. But th since this tribe was also run by leaders, it emerged within the tribal's chief values and they ended up with another kind of dictatorship where what people were allowed to be taught, what to wear, what to eat, and even what they could speak were closely controlled. <laughs> I mean, this is still China today with the social credit system where they control basically every citizen there, right? And if you say anything against the government, then you're fucked <laughs> because they will put you into prison maybe. You're not allowed to go out anymore and yeah, you will have to calculate with some... Uh, restrictions for you 
you can read all of that yourself, I would say. I just want to highlight and say that this is very important, you know, that if you think about communism, then you should not think about China or Russia and what happened there. You should think about the idea. What did Marx and Engels propose? Um, yeah, so I think we can continue here. Then there was in the mid 1900s um, there was a guy um, in Tanzania and he also tried to improve things there but um, it also happened that he became a dictatorship um, so yeah he was a dic uh, he was a teacher and he tried to bring social care and education into the tribe and at first it was okay as people did get some healthcare education and food but since he started with a very poor tribe and people had to work to bring these services to all, it turned into a complete failure, never able to bring about the abundance that Marx had envisioned. So yeah, and then Tanzania was also caught up in another fire by globalization. Um, yeah, so it also became yet another failure. And the kid is now like, I would have never imagined that such, a, such good ideas like caring for our fellow human beings by creating an equal society devoid of classes and profit could be transformed into such horrifying scenarios. But as I understand now, it's because they weren't prepared. They started with primitive and unscientific notions for organizing their people. How many people died because of this, he's asking. And then the old dude answers, hundreds of millions and many more ended up living a sad and brief life. So, and now this example of kibbutz in Israel. I can say you, I can tell you, my parents, they have been in Israel and they lived there for, yeah, just a couple of weeks and they um, helped there in a kibbutz community. Um, because the kibbutz were also like some small productive groups, or they still are, I think, of people organized themselves in Palestine, or Palestina, um, which is Israel today, based on Marx's ideologies. They had no concept of, of employee or employer, um, no ownership, no individual leaders and little use for money. They farmed for food, took collective care of the children and even shared their clothes. They also tried to build a way to shape human behavior into the society. For instance, they raised children alongside other children and not their parents, so that children grow up to become more independent, although their parents could spend three to four hours daily with the kids, which is more than what happens in most tribes on planet Earth today. So here also again, the um, like taking care of children, which was not only um, being done by the parents, but also from um, the whole community, basically. Mm, small things such as using benches instead of individual chairs for the communal place where they gather to eat, dance, etc. helped to make people socialize more. Of course, if you sit together, eat together, dance together, then um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a way of socialization. Same with kitchens, they were communal um, for the same purposes. Uh, some of them didn't allow television, so their members would not be influenced by the external consumption-based world. So they also tried to isolate themselves a bit from the external world, because they probably <laughs> understood that it's quite fucked up what, what happens all around. Um, and yeah, but they also had to do work, so that was quite a must. And they also tried to provide equal opportunities for women, so that men and women would have more equal statuses in their community. And now the kid says again, the rule about how to raise your kids again, I see. <laughs> but he's saying, don't get me wrong, it's not that rule that bugs me, but the fact that they would have any rules as to how you can raise your family. I think I understand it better now, that they wanted to build another kind of human through the infrastructure, a different kind of behavior. Did people accept these rules though? 
and the old martian dude is answering well these communities still exist on earth with around 270 groups consisting of over 100,000 members as of 2010 taking up around 9% of the entire population of what is now known as Israel and they produce most of what they need but they are still reliant on the external world for land, some funding and other relationships. So they mixed with the rest of the world a bit so while many of these communities still rely on the principles of communities and volunteer work Many have members with external jobs and some communities pay their members or invite people from outside of the group, non-members, to help with the work and pay them. Although major decisions about the future of the kibbutz were made by consensus or by voting, day-by-day -day decisions about where people would work are often made by elected leaders. All of these changes create some values, statues, issues, distortions that put some of their members off. But overall, the crime rate is significantly lower than the national average and a surprisingly large number of kibbutzniks have become teachers, lawyers, doctors and political leaders. So I think it's a good approach, of course, if you organize people in a community where they have a lot of social interactions, where they can um, spend time together where they grow or raise children all together um, then um, of course if, if, that's that's the that's the rocket science behind that if you take care of people if they have good relations with other people then they will have probably a happy life with very little incentive to steal or lie or yeah any of these behaviors so um, he's continuing many felt like you about some of the rules they put in place a good number of them started rejecting basic ideas such as no television allowed no property allowed or the fact that you have to raise your children in a separate children's home and that led to even more delusion of their initial ideals so yeah we also have to be realistic and admit that they not only depend on the external world still but um, they also have members within their communities and they have a tv they um, yeah don't take these ideals that um, important anymore so some said they were not motivated to work better because they had access to the same things as some who didn't work much while others said they that they developed a sense of fellowship and care for the others the kid is now analyzing and says ah i see so in the end it seems like it's not a good idea to dictate to people as to how they should live their lives like how to raise their children um, this seems like a great attempt though, but did it change much of planet Earth's societies? I mean in people's views. And then the old dude says, personally I would say that it hasn't even made a dent. There are so few people involved in that compared to the rest of the world. Also, many of their core values, which should have reflected communism, are too blended and mixed with other values of the capitalist world. So you see, it's very difficult to, yeah, kind of separate you from the system um, and to have your own community. Many people tried, um, some worked better, some worked worse. Um, it's tricky in today's world. The old guy is now saying, do you understand now why the alternative to the capitalist world didn't work? And the kid is like, let me try. So the kid is analyzing now. As far as I can tell, the ideals of socialism and communism were never truly put into practice. At least communism wasn't. The old dude adds, yes. And as a result, it creates a huge confusion when people talk about communism on planet Earth. Especially when they associate it with Lenin, China or other tribes that didn't follow the original ideals. Ask any earthlings if they know of any advanced tribe of millions of members ruled by no one and devoid of social classes and money 
all based on science. Actually, according to the ideals of communism, the entire world should be like that as a truly unified world. So they never happened in the first place. Why you think they never happened? The kid answers, as I understand it, those who came up with these ideas had very little to say about them. They merely presented some basic concepts that could be interpreted in many different ways. Are you summarizing their ideas a lot for me here? The old dude answers, actually no. I said exactly what they said. They mainly criticized the ugly and spoiled brother capitalism. The kid is now like, yeah. Because what in the world does it mean to be equal? No classes. What do you mean by abundance? How can you go about creating that abundance? The more I think about this, the more I realize there are too many un unanswered questions. Even in the I ideals. How can you create a new world when you don't know much about how to actually do that? <laughs> then the old dude says, you're a pretty smart kid, kid. And those who tried to put these ideas into practice on large scales did anything but science. They tried to impose such a simply described system to masses of people living under poor technological advancements and the privativism of their own personal judgments. I want to say that I appreciate their efforts to try and create a different kind of world, but when I think about the many deaths and enslaved people, I can't bring myself to say that. So he's talking about Lenin, Mao from China and Nye, the guy from Tanzania. And they tried, um, probably they wanted to do something good, but if you kill other people, even if they are rich, it's, they are just, you, you should blame the environment, you should blame the trade-based environment and you should, instead of killing people, you should try to change that trade-based system that we live in and this is i feel like this is very it's so easy once you get it but it's so difficult if you if you never question trade you know so that's why we have such a book that's why we discuss these ideas and now the kid is just saying yes you kill those who oppose you don't you have any scientific understanding on how to bridge the differences between people or nations what about building a society where you can reduce or eliminate crime? Even those kibbutz communities that were closer to the basic ideas of communism were also injecting their own values into how they should organize themselves, right? They were also infected by the capitalist world. I wonder if they ever had any plans as to how you might organize huge piles of people, not just a few hundred or thousand per group. If I understand correctly, many more issues and complexities arise when there are great many people at stake. The old dude says yes. And also in kibbutz communities, they were not technologically advanced. There wasn't an abundance. They grew dependent on their host tribe, Palestine or Israel today, for land and funds and so on. There are many similar self-sustainable mini societies today but we are concerned about how we can organize a highly technological society on a planetary scale, right? And the kid is like, exactly, we are here colonizing on Mars. We cannot just say, all right, let's like start a small community. We need to get things done. We need to take care of people. We should take care of the environment. So how can we do that? But what system should we choose to organize ourselves here on Mars? I am so confused right now. And we are going to continue with that little story from um, the old Martian guy and the kid. Um, this will be on pause for a moment. We are going to look really how things are working here on planet Earth um, to get a better understanding um, of today's system, of today's world, because this is crucial if we want to um, migrate towards a better society well then i think it's enough for this video see you then in the next video and as always take care and much love